What is up, college sports fans, fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome in to a very special edition of Coos's Corner. So sit back, relax, and let me serve you up this shot of top shelf college football content. And today, I'm not doing it alone. I'm joined by a very special guest, the one and only former West Virginia safety, Darwin Cook. Hey, how's everybody going out there? What's up, Darwin? How you? How are you doing? I'm pretty good, man. I'm pretty good. I can't call it. I'm excited to have you on, man. I, I appreciate you coming on my show. Likewise, likewise. I'm a big fan of the show, so you know, I wanted to come on. Uh, I love how you go in depth about the Mountaineers. Uh, I love the passion behind it. So every time I watch the show, I get fired up. So I'm saying, <laughs> I just say, hey, man, let me go on and, and, and just show some love. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that, man. Uh, sure. Before I get started, with, before we start our discussion here, everybody, I want to let you know first, you can see at the top of the screen, I've got my Twitter handle there at coos206 uh, darwin i've got his instagram it looks like he's not very active on twitter so uh i put his instagram ab- at the top there at darwin underscore cook you can look us both up uh communicate i'm sure he would love to communicate with with uh, fellow members of mountaineer nation out there right. is that right darwin right you know it is there anywhere else they can find you if they want to if they want to look you up so I do have a uh, youth football program, uh, the Kennel Club. So uh, it's the underscore Kennel underscore football. It's on uh, Instagram. Um, okay. And I'm also on LinkedIn as well. So just Darwin. Okay. Yeah. Darwin Cook on LinkedIn and the Kennel Club, the underscore Kennel Club. Yep. On, the on underscore Kennel underscore football. Uh, football on, uh, on Instagram. So everybody go check that out. I'll try yep. to leave a link to that in the description box uh, when we're done. But uh, let's let's get into the discussion, man. Uh, first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, obviously you played for West Virginia. Well, just I'll tell you, I'll let you tell the story. What uh, what made you pick West Virginia and kind of t- talk us talk about your career for the Mountaineers a little bit? So that's a little bit of a long story. So I'm from East Cleveland, Ohio. I went to Shaw High School. Um, I didn't I did not play high school football my sophomore year. So my first true year of high school football was my junior year. Um, I had 22 sacks. So I had got an offer from Cincinnati. Um, And then once that offer from Cincinnati came, uh, West Virginia came to my to my school and asked me to come up for a junior day. Um, Once I came up for that junior day, I sat into a sat in the office with with Bill Stewart, looked him out of the eye, uh, gave him my story and and I sold myself. And he basically offered me on the spot. So um, I thank Bill Sore for that for that offer. Awesome, that is a cool story. So you'd only played two. So you really only played two years of football before you got to Morgantown. Is that correct? I, no. So I I've been playing since I was seven. Oh, okay. um, but I was ineligible my freshman year of okay. high school. So okay. that I couldn't play my sophomore year. Yeah. Gotcha. So I just got my grades right. I got a three point five my junior year, four point oh my senior year and was able to, you know, receive that scholarship from West Virginia. Awesome. That's a good redemption story there, man. It shows that. Yes, sir. Don't ever give up. Right. Yes, sir. Don't never stop following your dreams, man. Right. Um, so what, uh, obviously Bill leaves, Dana comes in, takes over the team that basically Bill Stewart had recruited for the most right. part, essentially. Correct. Ends up winning an orange bowl. Right. Uh, do you think, Bill Stewart gets enough credit for winning that Orange Bowl for the Mountaineers? No, I don't think he gets enough credit, and also Coach Castillo. Uh, because of that entire season, um, I feel like fans, uh, just looking back, think we scored 70 points per game that, that season, which was not true. Um, defense made some big-time plays when you look back at the Pitt game, when you look back at the South Florida game, when you look back at the Cincinnati game. Um so, yeah, I, I feel that in, in, and in terms of Bill Stewart, just the recruits, when you talk about Geno Smith, when you talk about Tavon Austin, when you talk about Stedman Bailey, when you talk about Patrick Edgar, when you talk about Bruce Irvin, when you talk about Terrence Garvin, when you talk about Roger Jenkins, Patrick Miller, right? Those, mm-hmm. we were his first recruiting class, right. right? And it was the top recruiting class in West Virginia history. And then he backed it up the next year with a better recruiting class, with the Brunettis and the Ivan McCartney. So so definitely, definitely um, 
he deserves a lot of credit for that orange bowl. Because when you look at the touchdowns, you look at the sacks, you look at the interceptions, you look at my play, those are all Bill Stewart's recruits. So right. So whenever the Orange Bowl come up, Bill Stewart's name should be attached to that. I agree with that. And I've always thought that. Uh, I mean, obviously, you, have, you know, Dana gets the credit because he was standing on the sidelines during the game and making the calls. And, of course, everybody remembers that 70-point explosion, right? Right. Um, and speaking of that Orange Bowl, uh, I wanted to I wanted to play show the play on the screen as we were talking about this so you could walk us through it, but due okay. to copyright reasons I can't do that unfortunately. But I'll leave a link to a YouTube video for everybody to go check out. I'm sure all of Mountaineer Nation knows the play anyways. Mm-hmm. Probably no reason to even watch it again, but unless you just want to. But that play is one of the most unusual plays I've ever seen as a college football fan. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looked like Clemson had a touchdown, and all of a sudden you're scampering down the field for 99 yard touchdown. Can you kind of walk through what you saw as the play was developing and then how it transpired? Right. So, luckily, um, the referee blew the whistle the play before, so they had to redo the entire play, right? Mm-hmm. So, the next play, I'm coming around probably to see the C, the C or the D gap, and I'm just I'm looking. It's a, it's a pile, and I see the ball, and it spins. So, I'm like, it's loose, right? Right. So, I'm like, how can I grab this ball? without anyone noticing because I don't think no one noticed the ball is right here. Right. Yeah. So I grabbed the ball. I turned around and I said a little prayer before <laughs> I left. I'm like, all Sorry. I have to do, cause I ran track in high school. Yeah. I was a hundred meter sprinter, okay. um, state qualifier. So I said, all I need to do is run as fast as I can for 40 or 50 yards, pick my knees up and no one should catch me. Yeah. So, that's what I did, and I seen Tandy to my left, and I was like, "No, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get off on Tandy, right? Yeah. I know I'm faster than Tandy." Right. So, and then when I got to the end zone, I flicked the ball, I popped my collar, right, trying uh-huh. to be fresh, <laughs> and I blacked out. I blacked out, and all I did was jump after I blacked out, and I tackled an orange. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you about that. So you don't remember that? I don't remember tackling the orange. <laughs> I just did it, and, and everything just went black. Oh, man. So, yep, that's my, my play. But anytime that Orange Bowl play come up, I want to mention Doug Rigg um, because he stripped the ball. It should be okay. Doug Rigg stripped the ball, Darwin Cook take it 99 yards. Yeah. Um, and I'm in a Hall of Tradition with my name on the Orange Bowl. Right. And I, I, I feel like Doug should name should be right there next to him. So right. anywhere I, I go, and they bring up that play. I'm, I'm bringing up Doug Riggs. That's awesome. That's, I respect you for doing that. You got to uh, give mean, credit when credit is due. Making sure your teammate is involved in that. Uh, that mm-hmm. picture you just showed, will you? Uh, is, is that something that fans can get a hold of if they would like? Yes. So this picture, um, I sell them uh, online. You can go to my Facebook, Darwin Cook. Um, I probably sold this photo to let's say 150 mountaineer fans okay. um you know made a few bucks doing that before the nil going around the small businesses introducing yeah. myself um and that kind of thing so yep you can follow me on facebook or you can you know uh comment below with the address and i can get in touch with you there uh, either way yeah okay cool yes everybody if anybody wants anybody that's a collects memorabilia and once a copy of that picture hit uh, hit Darwin up, and he'll uh, he'll I'm sure you sign a copy of it. I'm assuming. Yeah, so I do to and from. I uh, put my name on it, and basically anything that you want. I, I just put 99 yards. We we can put each shit pit on there. So I customize it to your liking. Um, for I do it for birthdays, Christmases, holidays, Thanksgiving. So awesome. Anytime. Great segue. You said each shit pit. <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about the backyard brawl, brother. Okay. You were one of the last. You were part of one of the last teams to play in this game, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Because the game hasn't been played since what 2011, 2012? 20, 2012, Our Orange Bowl year. Okay. Can you explain to the Mountaineer fans out there what this game means to not only the state but to, to the to the program and to the players? I mean, it means so much. I mean, before I even came to the school, I was a big Ohio State fan because I'm from Cleveland, right? Right. So if Ohio, if West Virginia lost, Ohio State went to the national championship. 
right? Mm -hmm. But I watched the game and I and I seen a Pat McAfee lose, I mean, miss two field goals. Right? Something that right. never happened. So that right. was the first thing I learned about the backyard brawl. When I got to West Virginia, we brought out the uniforms, um, the gray, black, and white. Yes, remember yes. I love those uniforms. Yeah, those are my favorite uniforms. So I love just them. in that game, it was I'm like, I need to be on this field. I wasn't playing. Um, my line brother, uh, Terrence Garvin, he was he was starting that game. So I was just itching to get out there. Um, and then I got my opportunity the next year to play in the backyard brawl, which was the last backyard brawl. Um, and I, I did have an interception in that game. It was a tip pick uh, from Broderick Jenkins. So, yeah, that game is – I'm ready for it on September 1st. I hear you. Yeah, I can't wait, man. I kind of regret not getting tickets. Uh, they're they're pretty pricey though, but uh, I should have bought them early on when they weren't so expensive. But uh, so how much are they right now? Last I heard, they were about two two forty, and that's for standing room only. Wow, because it's sold out. Wow. I mean, <laughs> me and Stephen was um was look Stephen Bailey. We was looking to go to that game and go mm -hmm. to some tailgates and hopefully find some tickets. So I hear you. You know, just go to a couple of tailgates and hopefully absolutely. Yes, yeah, so you might be able to do that. Uh, you guys probably would have better luck than me. <laughs> thing is, right. thing is, you, thing is, people kind of know who you are, right? Uh, and you, I was, you know, you played in the last backyard brawl, but you're also uh, one of the few Mountaineers that have played in both the Big East and the Big Twelve. So, can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about the differences in those two leagues? The tempo. When, when you made that transition, the tempo. So the big, the Big East was more Smash small football with the with the Rutgers. Um, you had your Syracuses mm -hmm. and also even South Florida down in Florida, they was playing power ball. So, and then you go to the big 12 where everything is spread out. You have to get lined up in, in 13 seconds. So that was, that was a big adjustment for the team. Question for you. I just thought of this. I, I didn't prep you for this question, but no, I just no, thought you, of it. you can, you can fly away. Uh, when they made the coaching, if the, if they had had the transfer portal then like they do now, and you could have transferred, without penalty, right, and still been eligible, would you have transferred from West Virginia when they made the coaching change? I thought about it. Yeah. I thought about it after my junior year, uh, just me coming off the Orange Bowl, right, and uh -huh. then coming into my junior year. Um, I was hurt probably like four of the games. But then the next year uh, they promoted Carl, right? There's some right. posters. On, I'm like, man, I'd have put in blood, sweat, and tears. and and all of these things. Yeah. And I'm like, this is y'all not going to at least give me a little shine or talk about me a little bit. So that kind of yeah. rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. So I was thinking about transferring to uh, the Arizona Wildcats where uh, Coach Castillo was. Right. Um, but I just had so much ties to the to the state and I don't go out like that. And I just wanted to stick it through. I could have transferred because I was a senior. Red shirt. Redshirt senior transfer without right. any penalty. I got you. But I'm like, this is where I want to be. I I have done so much here, so let me just stick it out. Yeah, and I, I know respect team, that. Yeah, and I know the team needed me because we, Gino left, Tavon left, Stedman left, my LB left, Terrence Garvin. So yeah. I'm like, I need to be here, right? Yeah, you so needed to be a leader. I needed to be a leader. So that's yeah. and and I had and in result of that. I had my best season as yeah. a Mountaineer. So yeah. I'm glad. Awesome. Yeah. Let's talk about that real quick. I want to uh, pull some stats up here. And then I also want to talk about just the the, the Mountaineer uh, fan base for buying my photos. Um, and after uh, uh, getting cut from the Browns, mm -hmm. you know, job opportunities, um, helping out. So – um, I thank the Mountaineer fan base, thank Mountaineer alum for making uh, my life transition uh, much easier. So that's awesome. That's yeah. another reason why I'm glad I stayed. Because yeah. if I had left, I'm sure it, would, it wouldn't have been like that. So, and I still get love to this day. Um, like in the DC area, I'm uh -huh. a part of their alumni chapter, and I'm looking to get a part of the, the Houston alumni chapter here as well. So. Awesome. Awesome. That's great I'm stuff, out, man. Out near through and through. Yeah, hold up. Let me, let me give you something. Oh, 
Look at that right there. Yeah. Look at that. That's awesome. That's it. That's it right here. This is going in my trophy case in my orange bowl ring. So I wouldn't have it uh, any other way. That's awesome, man. Thank you for sharing that. Yep. Let's look a little bit here at your stats uh, throughout your career. Okay. You were talking about your uh, your best season. Senior year, so yeah. uh, 2013. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, you had 74 tackles that season. Mm -hmm. uh, four TFLs. Mm -hmm. Four interceptions that season. Mm -hmm. And you had two fumble recoveries. And two and three pass deflections, mm -hmm. uh, and a touchdown. Mm -hmm. on, uh, on so a pick six. So uh, that's cool stuff, man. And then your career stats are showing. Are these stats accurate to your knowledge? This yes. is from SportsReference.com. Yes, it shows you had two hundred forty-three tackles in your career. Correct. Two sacks, seven interceptions, mm -hmm. uh, a fumble recovery touchdown, and a interception return for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. So, and we all know that one touchdown there is from the orange bowl. Right. But, uh, but those stats, I mean, I, those stats are pretty darn solid. Uh, wouldn't you think? I would think so. Do you, do you feel like Darwin, do you feel like you get the respect, uh, the same res the respect that's due to you is for the time you put into to, to the Mountaineer, to, uh, to the Mountaineer program and to the team? Guys, because I am in a hall of traditions, right? So right. every recruit that goes through there, they they see my play. Um, so we have the Orange Bowl trophy. So my name is on there. But uh, just in terms of the recognition, and the, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, like when I go back, there's no hey Darwin Cook is is in attendance, but you know Will Greer is right. I so. Got you. Yeah, I, I feel like I put a little bit more blood, sweat, and tears than Will Greer. But I understand he's a great player. He did a, yeah. did a lot for the um, uh, school. So I get that. And, 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 you know, you and I were talking before we started about the guys, you know, how Dana used a lot of, got a lot, brought in a lot of transfers. And, right. and there's nothing wrong, wrong with bringing transfers in. I'm not saying that. But uh, the, I think we're losing. Uh, the respect and the I, – I, I, I don't want to say all fans because there's a lot of fans out there who really uh, admire and respect guys like yourself who stayed all four years. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we're just losing the respect that, that guys like yourself, the four-year players who stick it out, stick through the tough times, man, and, and uh, tough it out through adversity, you know. Uh, those mm -hmm. guys just don't get the respect they deserve, in my opinion. Right. Uh, and I, I put you in that category. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, when you look at those stats. But I definitely I mean, don't want to come across as ungrateful. I didn't have a oh. great experience. I get love from the Mountaineer fans when I'm, when I'm at the bars and things like that. Right. So, uh, but in terms of the school. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I found it odd. And I look, Will Greer is one of my favorite players of all time at West Virginia as far as watching him play. I have nothing against him. Seems like a great guy. Yeah, I just wanted to bring up a name. Yeah, no, right. But my point is, I saw on the uh, a few weeks back, he there was some alum that came back to Morgantown to talk to the team, mm -hmm. and the only one that got promoted online and on in social media was Will Greer. And uh, and I thought, you know, that's kind of a I, personally, I thought it was kind of dis dis. I don't want to say disrespectful, but just dis disingenuous to the guys. Who, who put four years into the program mm -hmm. and and not not to throw too much shade, but didn't set out any bowl games and right. things like that. And I, I'm not look, I'm that was right. his decision. Right. I'm not right. I'm not judging him for it. But this is fair. This is a fair conversation. My my point is there were other guys that could have gotten more hype around it that were there that weekend because I did see a few things online about it. Mm -hmm. But he was the only one that got like plastered up plastered up on Twitter and mm -hmm. all this, right? Mm -hmm. And there again I'm not throwing shade at Will Greer or anybody. I'm just he's right, just right. an example. He's not the only one that applies here, but right. uh because he's a quarterback, I'm I'm assuming is probably a big reason for that. Mm -hmm. Uh we all know the quarterbacks get all the love, right? 
But uh, right. uh, my point is, I think guys like yourself deserve more recognition than what you guys get. Uh, and like I think Jock Sanders, right? Right. What's that? Where's that? Like Jock Sanders, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I don't hear about him a whole lot. He, man, he was an awesome, awesome Chris football Neal. player. Chris Neal. Yeah. Great names, man. Uh, was, who, who was Reed? Reed, the middle linebacker? Reed Williams. Reed Williams. We can He's go on. Last I heard, he was farming now in Moorfield as his own business, uh, farming business. Right. But the point is, from a, from a football perspective, you're right. You, you just – don't hear them a lot. Of, I think I think we suffer from recency bias. A lot of us do. We only want to talk about the guys who've been here the last five years or four years right. or whatever. Uh, right. I don't even think Gino gets the recognition he deserves, to be honest with you. Right. That guy broke every record there is. That's my quarterback. And if you ask me any quarterback, I'm taking Geno Smith over and, and, Pat White. And, yeah, I mean, and you still – people don't mention him a lot as much as they do the Pat Whites, and they mm-hmm. even Will Greer for that matter. Uh, but there again, I think a lot of that is recency bias, some to some extent. But let's, uh, but I do, th- I mean, I think that play alone that you made there mm-hmm. is oh, that might be a Hall of Fame worthy moment. And you know what right. I mean? In, right. In, in, if nothing else, in, in, in Mount and I, I am on a stadium too. I'm just saying, in terms of, yeah, like when I come back, yeah, I got you. And I think. And this will kind of transition over to my next conversation. I think Don't Coach take Brown, off the stadium. <laughs> I think Coach Brown is trying to change that narrative a little bit. He seems mm-hmm. to be embracing more of the past players than what the previous staff did. Mm-hmm. Uh, so speaking of that, uh, what do you think about the current state of the program and where Coach Brown's going right now with with this team? What I like about Coach Brown is that he can take the heat, right? And I like about him, what I do like about him, too, he's not looking for just transfers. He's looking to recruit. So more like what Bill Stewart was doing. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just look at our team now. We have probably two players that wouldn't be on the team next year. So we're looking good for years to come. Right. But I I definitely believe he's the right person to steer the ship. It was just a question about the offense. The defense been solid. Uh, now that he brought in uh, Graham Harrell, I feel that that may be the answer, and he can just run the ship. Yeah, but I definitely feel like he's a he's a good person to run the ship. And then when when we win the Big Twelve this year, it's just going to be a snowball effect because he's been through the heat, he knows how to recruit, and it's just going to be consistent from here on out. I like your confidence. Not if we win it, but when. When uh, when you look at that team, JT Daniels, the offensive line, you look at Bryce Ford Wee and Sam James, even the Preston Fox guy, Reese Smith. You got Caden Prater, that's probably the best receiver on our team. Right? And you got the Tony Mathises. And then you go on the D line, we 3 D. We go to the linebackers, we fast and physical. Lance we, Dixon. They say, yeah. They say Charles. Jacoba. And you're in Lee Coba, and they say Charles Woods is the best receiver in the nation. Mm-hmm. I mean, cornerback in the nation. Yeah. And I got a sleeper pick, Davis Mel- Mallinger, the safety. Yeah. He's listed 6'1. I was on the field. He's like 6'3. Talking to the coaches, they say they had to stop him from hitting people. And he's one of wow. the fastest on the team. Yeah, I heard about his speed, but now I didn't know that about the hitting. Yeah. That's, that's, that's he good had to, to know. Stop. Yeah, the, they had to pull him back. Because he was just hitting people too much. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's my sleeper. There you go. That's a good sleeper, man. That's my sleeper. Sometimes, I, sometimes I think coaches don't mention guys in press conferences just because they want to want to surprise people with yeah, how good a, they are. He's a sleeper. He reminds me of a, a fast Kenny Vaccaro. A fast what? Kenny Vaccaro from Texas. Oh, okay. I got yeah, you. But with speed. Yeah. Got you. And Aubrey Burks, he got NFL range. As a safety, yeah, Number they got two. a lot. They're recruiting length, they're recruiting speed, athleticism. They're recruiting guys who can cover one on one now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the I've been telling you, top notch, absolutely. I've been telling people, and this is not a shot at the guys who left the program, they put in their heart and soul to this team. But 
a lot of these transfers we had leave, I don't think – I think a lot of those guys left were encouraged to leave and go play, go somewhere else and play. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. Obviously, nobody's going to know that unless you're part of the conversation. But mm-hmm. Because I think they wanted to remake the team to, to an extent where they wanted certain types of guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Right mm-hmm. or wrong, that's what I think happened. And I've heard Coach Brown say some things too that make me – you know, they've said mm-hmm. we remade our roster. We now have guys pulling the rope in the same direction. There's been a lot of those comments that make me think, you know, maybe maybe the coaching staff encouraged some of these guys to leave or, or it was a mutual decision that was better for both parties so that West Virginia could bring in a different type of player and then those guys could go somewhere where they might get to see the field more, right, and be, be on a team that best suits their, their skill set. Exactly. Uh, Transferring is not always a bad thing mm-hmm. for either party. You know, but uh, I don't feel that we lost anything. Right. When you when you have Kobo, how, how do you say it? Kobo? Koba. Koba. When you have Koba, Lance Dixon, and Shaq Bartlett with the three deep, that's probably our best front seven in some time. Oh, yeah. And that's even without it. Mesador. I don't, I don't, I think people are underestimating Je- uh, Jordan Jefferson. I think that guy's going to be good. I'm not really on on top of on top of that one. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Jefferson is. Uh, he's. They say he's the strongest guy on the team. Oh, okay. And uh, of course, he's a different player than Mesador. Me- Jefferson's a big, you know, big guy that's going to take up a lot of space in the middle. Mm-hmm. Mesador is more of a speed guy. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I still think when you add him in there, and then you plus you've got Dante and Taj Austin on the other, you know, mm-hmm. flankering him on the right and left. It's gonna be hard to stop that D line, brother. I-, I do this every year. I'm like, we should, we should win 10 games. Yeah, I do too. That's that's my problem. I always get my hopes up too much, and then we end up – it doesn't work out, and then I'm disappointed. I'm hard in my stomach uh, week <laughs> six. There you go. Well, before I let you go, what is Darwin Cook up to today? So I have a youth football development program uh, down here in Houston, Texas that I'm starting. Uh, so if you're in the Houston, Texas area – uh, North Houston, Texas area. Uh, I'm starting a 6U, 8U, and 10U flag football program. Um, in a year or two, we're going to do full contact, and I'm going to run it like it's uh, a, a Division One program. So if you want your kid to get faster, um, be taught by someone with experience. Um, bring, them to my, bring them to my team. That's awesome. And there again, uh, tell them one. I know you touched it on at the beginning, but one more time, where can they find information about that league? Yep, it's at the uh, Instagram, the underscore kennel, K E N N E L underscore football on Instagram. And then I'm making my Facebook page. So, all right, perfect. And uh, what are you doing today as far as uh, if you want to talk about it? You don't have to talk about it. Yep. As far as your career? So I'm doing federal business development sales. Uh, right now, I'm a federal business development manager. I've uh, been doing this for the past five to six years. Um, you know, sales come natural to me. Um, you know, meeting and greeting, you know, smiling and, and solving challenges. So, um, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, and I appreciate all the WVU alum that helped me transition from the field to the um, just this whole job and in the corporate life with, with opportunities and things like that. So I'm forever grateful uh, for the Mountaineer family. And also something that always sticks, sticks with me uh, that I learned from Bill Stewart. And that's one of the reasons why I stayed. It was to never, ever leave your wingman, like never, ever bail out on your brother. Mm -hmm. Right. It don't matter if we didn't like each other or whatever, we were sticking together. Um, and and there's, it's another one that he says, he says, never forget to stop the smell of roses, right? Just yeah. in that transition, that, you know, phrase stuck with me and, and it just helped me and, 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 and it kept me going. So yeah. never forget to stop the smell of roses, no matter how your situation, how bad your situation may be. We're good. So That's great advice, man. Rest yeah. in peace to Mr. Bill Stewart, great mountaineer. Great mentor of men, leader of men, absolutely. The, the, the leave no doubt speech, which what you just said a minute ago is in it. 
uh, never leave your wingman, never bail out on your brother. That was part of that speech. And uh, I think it still holds true today, especially in the game of football. And in life, really. Not just football, but in life. Yep. If you got those type of people around you, you're going to succeed. Absolutely. So, Well, Darwin, listen, man. It's been an honor to, to talk to you, to meet you. I appreciate you coming on here and sharing some of your stories with Mountaineer Nation. I'm sure they'll really enjoy it. Uh, kind of get an inside inside peek at, at what it's like to be uh, in, in those games and in those moments. Mm-hmm. So uh, I appreciate it again. Everybody go check – go hit Darwin up on Instagram at, at Darwin underscore Cook. Look me up on Twitter at – I'm on Instagram as well at Kuz's Corner, but uh, I'm, I'm a lot more active on Twitter, so that's where you can find me easiest. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, please. If you haven't yet, uh, give this video the like button. Uh, share it out with your friends and uh, let them know about what Darwin has going on down there with the Kennel, Kennel uh, Football Club down there in Houston, mm-hmm. and uh, and go and buy one of his pictures, folks. Buy one of the Orange Bowl pictures where he uh, closed line with the orange. <laughs> <laughs> to and from personalized, and it's only and it's only ten bucks, two dollars shipping. Awesome, so, good deal. And I will be doing this forever. So awesome. All right. Darwin, thanks again, man, and you have a great, great day. All right, likewise. I'm going to continue watching the show, too. Thank you, man. Let's go Mountaineers. Let's go.